come to a green light in your car, you're driving along, there's a green light. How many people in here actually have ever stopped at a green light? Now, I'm not talking about senior moments, all right? <laughs> I'm talking about stopping at a green light, getting out of your car, and walking around to the other side just to make sure the other one really is red. Because obviously, if it was green too, it'd be dangerous to go through that intersection. And so what happens when Alan Greenspan or the Federal Reserve holds interest rates all the way down at 1%, you get a green light. You get a green light to make a purchase that's bigger than probably you should. And by the way, the financial system is no different than you. Bankers, they're no different than individuals. They would say, hey, with interest rates so low, leverage, uh, borrowing doesn't matter as much, it's cheap, so why don't we lever up a little bit more? After all, it's Alan Greenspan, the smartest man in the world, that tells us interest rates are 1%. In other words, all the lights are green. And, and so what happens when you hold interest rates down like this, you cause people to make decisions that they wouldn't otherwise make. Now let me put this in a different perspective. House prices went up at 8% in 2001, went up 8% in 2001. By 2004 and 2005, they went up 14% in 2004, 15% in 2005. So you could borrow at 1%, especially with those teaser loans, and you could have a house that was appreciating at 14%, what a great deal. And so what happened is that we encouraged more people to buy homes and bigger homes than they should have at the time. We also encouraged bankers to take on more leverage and make more uh, risky bets than they would have if interest rates were higher. In fact, if interest rates would have been four or 5%, I don't believe we would have had the housing bubble at all. 